ISO 9001-2008 is a generic standard. Implementing this standard, the first consideration should be what does my business do and how does it do it? When you ask yourselves those two questions, you then consider what you do and how you do it and how it relates to what the standard is looking for you to put in place. But I would suggest to you that when you do go through the what and the how, you will find very quickly that you are ticking a lot of the boxes that are required in ISO 9001 because it's just good business practice. ISO 9001 is a standard which is applicable to many, many variances of organisations and the businesses that they carry out. It can be related to companies that manufacture and it can be related to companies that provide a service. The structure of the standard is actually quite basic. If you think about your organisation and you say, OK, what do we need to have in place? Uh, the first thing you need is evidence of what you do and how you do it, which is the documentation and the record keeping. The second thing that the standard basically looks for is say, OK, well, now how do we manage all of this? You know, what are the controls that we need to put in place to manage it? We then need to make sure that the resource that we use is actually capable and competent of delivering the service or delivering the product, the manufactured product. Following that, how do we actually build? How do we actually deliver our service? How do we make sure that when we have relationships with external bodies such as suppliers, that we actually manage those properly? How do we make sure that the tools that we use are properly calibrated? We will come to that. And the final section of the standard is that as with every standard that the International Standards Organisation try to introduce, is improvement. How do we make sure that we are not standing still, that we are looking to move forward and improving? This is ISO 9001. So um, if they haven't done so already, I would advise an organisation to do a process map of their key processes, the key inputs, what the key process is around their product realisation product and service realisation processes, and then what the outputs are from their, their business model. And then acquire a copy of the standard, see where the system that they have meets the requirements of the standard and try and identify are there any gaps there. At the initial stages of implementation, the organisation should initially identify what its key processes are, what it does, what, what's in, what it is in business for, and then say what is the key processes that we have that deliver on our customer requirements. And in doing that, That'll help them define the scope of the organisation because they say this is the fundamental business that we are in, this is the service we are offering and this is what we are offering to our customer. The, the scope statement that they will develop and which will eventually go on a certificate if they are certified to ISO 9001 will allow their customers to see that the specific activity that is mentioned in that scope statement has been certified and will clarify if there are other aspects of the business that are outside of the scope it should be definitive enough to actually identify what activities are in the scope, what activities are out of scope. A gap analysis is a good option when the organisation is just at the start of the implementation of the QMS. There may be the, the, the bones of a system there and a certain level of awareness among the, the staff and also among the designated management representative and the organisation wants to know to what degree do they meet the requirements of the standard, what do they need to do to get to the level of where they would be appropriate for getting certified. In ISO 9001-2008 there's a reference to a quality manual. There's a misunderstanding in many cases about the content of a quality manual. The quality manual is not the quality system. The quality manual is the overview of the quality system. It can be a very small document but it has to show how it connects to all of the other elements of the system. The most important part about the quality manual is for the senior management to recognise that it is a good management summary of their management system. ISO 9001-2008 is extremely specific now about what are the mandatory requirements from building a management system. The primary requirement is that you define your business through processes. The secondary requirement, but it is mandated, is that you have to have in place procedures that relate to document control, record control, that relate to internal audit, control of non-conforming product, 
preventive and corrective action. If you think about these six procedures, they don't have to be separate procedures. Document and record control can be one document. Corrective and preventive action can be one document. Non-conforming product tends to be a separate document, as so does internal audit. But these six requirements are the basis for you to have for your management system and the way it works. Mm -hmm.